Hello, welcome to the video. Today is a bit of a ramble tangent video on my five wishes for film photography in 2023. I'm a little bit late to the party with 2023, but I feel like these topics probably might go on for years to come, so it could still be relevant in a few years' time anyway. The return of colour. Um, basically, it would be nice to go to buy film and actually see colour negative film in stock or colour positive film in stock. Um, it's been no secret for the past couple of years, it's been really quite hard to find. Obviously, I think this isn't much as a problem with the film industry as a whole, but I think it's more representative of the global economy. There's, there's all sorts of supply chain issues across multiple industries and costs of manufacturing going up, etc, etc. Et you can go on. But it just would be nice to have some more consistent options available. Um, there's obviously the cinema stocks route, like your vision freeze and stuff, which have been hand rolled into these canisters. But obviously the development, if you're not getting these developed by yourself, can be a bit more time consuming. Breakthrough in sustainability and longevity. This one's a bit more blue sky thinking, I think. It's very clear we're in a revival of film photography, and I think to keep that longevity up, there needs to be a bigger push on sustainability, and obviously the old ways might not necessarily work now in, today, in today's world. This is a big reason why Fujifilm have been cutting film stocks, is because some of the chemicals used in their emulsions ain't particularly good for the environment. Another elephant in the room is the plastic, the amount of plastic that's used in disposable cameras to the film roll holders. That's a lot of plastic and sometimes you're only using that thing, you might only use it for a day. And then it's just a bit of rubbish, essentially. But I think there's been breakthroughs, people, labs and manufacturers and stuff have started to make that push now and finding ways to make the supply chain more circular and more sustainable. I think, hopefully, I mean, the likes of Fujifilm and Kodak, these are big chemical manufacturers that perhaps there might be a breakthrough. Who knows, they can make Kodak Aerochrome, but with some, I know, emulsion made from soy. <laughs> Who knows? But hopefully, to keep this alive, I think there needs to be bigger expansion into these areas, realistically. It remains affordable. Again, in the past couple of years, I think we've all felt the pinch of film photography getting much more expensive than it once was. Even just film cameras going up, you've got every aspect of it, it has gone up. And before, whereas you could get quite a few rolls for say 20 pounds, now, now you're lucky to get one roll, <laughs> one roll of color film for 20 pounds, or if you do, you ain't got much change left. I overheard in the camera shop the other day that there was a father and a son and they were looking at cameras to get and they were looking at the film camera section and a guy from the shop comes over and he started reeling off these prices of film and like how to get it developed and stuff and then he was like if you so basically now it's like if you're looking to get into photography film isn't a viable option if, you, if you're doing it on a shoestring well that's what he was trying to say I think you can still probably try and get away with it but to when I started to know it would be very difficult because, as we all know, you make a lot of mistakes early on and if you're spending 20 quid a time to make 36 mistakes on a roll, you're going to be put off very, very quickly. And again, we need new faces coming into the film industry to, you know, make it grow, make it last, bring new ideas, you know, just to keep it sustainable so people stay in the game and so it doesn't just cut off a whole band of people. If you like what you see in this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also hit the link in the description to get 10% off the Handsome Pro, uh, which I use to calibrate these videos. I want to see the community grow and be inclusive as well. It's, in the past few years, it's been great to see sort of these blowing up again. And it's great to see new YouTubers and all that stuff as well. And there's, there's so many different voices. Everyone's got something different to bring. And I think that having that diversity and people just bringing their own experiences and own stories to it. It's a great thing, magical thing. I'd, I'd, it'd be a shame to have a community where it's just like we're all sort of doing the exact same thing, we're all focused on the same aspects of it, we're all trying to take the same photos. Because that's just boring. I don't, I don't, you don't, life isn't like that. It's rich, it's a rich tapestry, and I think it should, our community should reflect that. When you've got all these different voices bringing 
fresh things to the table, that's when the magic happens. You might get someone from a different part of the world who's had a totally different experience, who's got a totally different interpretation of photography, you might come up with an idea for, I don't know, a new film stock or a new way of taking film photos that no one else has ever thought before, and that'd be quite magical. So I think when you see people promoting inclusivity and diversity, they can sometimes get a lot of pushback for that, and I, I just never understood it, and I think we should be supporting these ideas because at the end of the day, it's our benefit, because our, the stronger our community is, the better the film industry is the more it's going to stick around. The return of familiar faces, this is just pure dream and speculation, but it would be nice to see some cool things from the past maybe brought back. Uh, Pentax are working on new cameras, it'd be cool to see them reissue some classics. I mean Kodak Aerochrome, grainy days is leading that uh, charge, but I mean who wouldn't want Aerochrome? <laughs> the idea of reissuing cameras or manufacturers bringing stuff back, I think there is a real market for that, especially in a time when spare parts and camera repairs is getting fewer, well, it's getting, it can be hard to find at times. And so, I don't know. So I hope, obviously, with new products and stuff coming onto the scene, it would be nice to have some old familiar faces as well. I hope you like this video. I'll catch you in the next one.